His ways are past finding out, aren't they? Wonderful Lord. How sweet it is to trust Him. I'm just sure you've had a wonderful time tonight. Just opening the door there a few moments ago and hearing Sister Gertie sing that old song. Keep holding on. Just one more hour. It brought back memories of a, my little church when it was just before I left the other time to go into the fields of mission work. I'm looking now at a seek God first here in front across this old beam. I remember Sandy Davison painted that on there about 25 years ago. On the other side, I think it's got, where will you spend eternity? Think. Right here was uh, a woman at the well, Daniel in the lines there. <laughs> Oh, my. Many things have happened since then. Just about 5 o'clock this afternoon, I got an emergency call to come about 30, 40 miles down the country here of a dying woman and a very precious friend, Georgie Carter's mother. And I knew there was plenty of ministers here to hold till I got back. Edith has been very bad, too. And... While we were there, the Lord God moved on the scene, and Sister Carter is a long way from dying. So, so we're grateful for that. And now it's getting time for communion service pretty soon. I think it's about 12 o'clock when they go to. What time have you designated to give it? Any time uh, beginning now, any time after this, after 11.30. Just any time. It, we, uh, how many is to take communion tonight? Let's see your hands. That's all. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. I want to speak just a word or two. Maybe I'll lay my watch out here for about 10 minutes, 15. We'll start communion. Now, do you love him? Amen. 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 And I know you've had a great time, haven't you? Amen. Well, if you're a brother Thomas kid and sister kid, all the way down from Ohio. I guess he's been up. Oh, yeah. oh, that's fine. I hope it's on tape and I'll get it. <laughs> you know, they don't give up. They're just a few days under 100, but, um, but uh, that's what keeps me courageous is to see people like that. Think, I'm an old man, and before I was born, he was preaching the gospel. And then here I am, an old man, and they, if they can't get out and make their voice ring out, they just take a tape recorder and go to the hospital, <laughs> house to house, preaching the gospel. That's mighty fine. Amen. I'm sure happy for them and for all those who's anticipated. And this the service is here. And now, remember, we'll announce it now, the Lord willing, just as soon as the church is finished, which they claim will be about the 10th of February. Why, well, we're, the Lord willing, we want to take at least eight or ten or days or maybe two weeks on those seven seals of revelations. And uh, we'll sound out cards to our visiting people from around, from home here, and let them know uh, plenty of time ahead. So if they take a notion to come, well, we sure be glad to have you here. And maybe the Lord will give us another display of His presence like He did the last time when we got through the seven church ages. You ever want to pray for somebody? Well, I remember me all the time because I'm one who really needs it. Now, I'm kind of ashamed myself to take up these 10, 15 minutes here to say a little something before we start. But let's bow our heads just a moment. Lord Jesus, oh, the battle will be over someday. And there will be no more sick to be prayed for. And there will be no more sinners to repent. But, Father, while this day is what it is, let us work while we have light to work in. For the hour cometh when no man can work. Now, for just a few moments, Lord, I'd feel bad if I, did, I closed off this year without saying a few more words. Help me, Father, I pray. And I might say something that would plant courage in the heart of thy people. That we could leave here tonight after taking the communion and we realize that in the communion there is strength. Amen. Israel took the communion first down in Egypt and walked 40 years without their shoes wearing out 
are their clothes getting threadbare? And out of two million people, there wasn't a feeble one among them when they come out of the wilderness. Lord, let us remember that tonight. As we approach this great hour, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. If I should speak the context that I had wrote down that I was going to start on this afternoon, we'd be here at five o'clock in the morning. But I want to read just a word from, thank you, from Ephesians, the sixth chapter, 12th verse. And just for a few moments now, for courage. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. And I'd like to draw from that a little uh, 10 or 15 minutes context, or text rather. I want to call it the contest. A contest is a test of strength. And we, um, where we have uh, the uh, test strength, we used to have the Indian used to put a fire and they would uh, put so many men on this end of the rope and so many on this end. And the, the tug of war, the contest of strength, would pull the losing party across the fire. And now uh, we know there's many things and we could base this upon for a few minutes of, of contest. But I want to speak for these minutes quickly upon the greatest contest there is. That's between the church and... And Satan, that great strength of Satan. And we want to speak of the great strength of God in his church. Now, this great contest has been going on for many years. It started in heaven, and Satan was kicked out into the earth, and then he become an enemy to God's people. And since then, he's used all of his strength and his strategy to try to pull God's people across the fires or into his fires. And we know that who has the most power? God does. Amen. And God, when he gave his people the best thing that he could to combat Satan with was his word. Now, because the Word is God, and who's stronger than God? Hallelujah. So, the Word is God, and the Word becomes our strength. God in the church becomes His strength to pull Satan to his own fires Amen. that he has made. And the tug goes on. Now, Jesus said in Mark 16... In my name they shall cast out devils. Now, I know that's an old uh, uh, saying that people, or there is an old saying that, and it's not so old either. People don't believe in demons in this day. No. But the thing to do, to my opinion, is know your enemy. And, and know your enemy and train... Uh, for the contest that you're going to have when you meet him. Amen. Because you're going to meet him. Amen. And know him, know, his, know what his strength is, and then train for this contest when you do meet him. For it's one thing sure, you're going to meet him. And so you train for the contest. Now, Training for a contest is just like a boxer. His, uh, his uh, enemy that he's going to meet out there in a contest to fight, a real good fighter usually knows and studies his opponent, studies his licks, knows where he fights for, where he leans forward, hangs back, fights right-handed or left-handed, he studies all this, and then if he's a good, smart fighter, he gets him a sparring partner that'll fight just like his opponent fights. For he'll know all of his licks when he gets to that place. 
And I think that's a very good thing for Christians to do. Amen. That's right. And now, if you want to start training, start with John 3, 16, the golden rule. Start right out with that, and that'll get you on the floor, and then train for the, for the knockout punches, because you're going to have to use them. Everybody knows that. You have to train to hit your enemy. And always God uses His Word. We must remember that God uses His Word to defeat His enemy. If God could think or could have given His people anything better to defeat the enemy with, He would have done it. So as I've always said, when God makes a decision, that's the best that there is. He never has to alter His decisions. So the first decision God gave His people in the Garden of Eden to combat the enemy was His Word. They were fortified with His Word. And now the enemy is going to study the, our, a strategy with the Word. And now Satan studied that all out so perfectly that when he come to Eve, he had the, the best of strategy he could use upon her, and that was to reason with the Word. Now, you never want to reason with God's Word. Just believe it. Amen. Don't try to explain it. Don't try to figure it out. Now, you cannot figure out God, so God is the Word, and it's just made to believe. And that's our strength. Just accept the Word, and anyone knows that a seed in the right kind of ground will produce its kind. And we just take the Word, and now Eve began to stop to reason when he, she quoted the Word to him, and God said, you should not eat thereof, for the day you eat thereof, that day we die. And Satan never disagreed with her. He said, certainly that's right. But he said, you see, you need some new light, something a little different from what God said. And if you do do it, you'll be just a little smarter. Your eyes will be open. But she said, well, God said we would die. He said, oh, surely. See, there you come. Yeah. Just that much. Surely you won't die, but God said you would. And that settles it. And that, that broke that great Amen. tug of war then and pulled the whole human race into death. Because Eve listened to a reasoning against God's Word. Now, it's a shame that she did it, but it's done past. But now we're still fortified and that link was made up in Christ Jesus. We know that. God gave us our best defense just simply to trust His Word. You know, and many say today that there is no such a thing as a devil. Uh, they believe that it's just simply a thought. They believe that, and there's people that believe that, that if the Holy Spirit is a good thought and if the devil is a bad thought, but if you notice when the Bible speaks of the Holy Spirit, he said, when he, the Holy Spirit, has come, and he's a personal pronoun, see? So he, he is a person, and the devil is a person, and demons are persons. Amen. Yes, they are demons, and they, they come in many ways, but they think it's an old Fashion idea. A man was arguing to me here a few weeks ago. He said, you know what you do? You just set those people's mind to thinking something. When you uh, uh, tell them that thing, it's just a change of thought. I met that very same thing in India one time. One of those holy men there where we had, I believe, the largest audience I ever spoke to in one standing audience of being a half million people. And... I caught it by discernment in the Spirit, and um, they would see the Holy Spirit call people and call them out into the audiences and tell different things. And catching their thought, the Ray Jaws and the Holy Man, they said, He's reading their mind. So a few moments, about five or six had passed through the prayer line, and a blind man come through. And he was totally blind. 
and his eyes were as white as my shirt. And I said, now here is a blind man anyone can see he's blind. And I said, if I could help him, I would do so. But the only way I could do would be by a gift to maybe say something that he has done. And that would give thought that if God know what he has done, he certainly will know what he's going to do. So I said, now, looking at him, I said, now, he's a worshiper of the sun. He's been blind 20 years. And when the interpreter said it, that was right. I said, he's a married man. He, his wife is rather small, and he has two sons, one about seven, one nine. That was exactly right. Called their names, what it was. Then out in the audience, in the place where the people were, there come that wave in. It's mental. It's um, something on the order of, of a psychic reading of their mind. Then I thought, Lord, if you'll just help me, I, I need your help, Lord. These people are trying to class this a telepathy. And it's not. And you know it, Lord. And yet I'd given the scripture that Jesus said he did nothing till the Father showed him. And then turning to look at the man again, I saw him just above there in a vision with just as good eyes as I am. I thought, now is the time. I said, this man is a worshiper of the sun. Now, and he's gone blind. I said, now, the, there's the Mohammedan priest, and there's uh, the priest of the Sikhs, Jains, and the different types of religion, Buddha. Now, this man wants to receive his sight. Now, you would say that he, he worshiped the creation instead of the creator. I believe that too. But here we sit tonight. I said, and we've been, today I was entertained in the James Temple where 17 different religions was there to interview me and every one of them against Christ. Every one. And I said, now, and many of you men was down there. Now, if Christ is so wrong, then this man wants to be right. And surely the God of creation who made the world will be the only one who can give him his sight. That's reasonable. And I said, now, if any of you people, the Mohammedan here is the leading religion, if the Mohammedan priest will come here and give him his sight, then I'll follow Mohammedan. <laughs> or if the Buddha priest will come give him his sight. But let the God who made him the God, somebody's God somewhere, because there has to be. Amen. We can't have a creation without a creator. Amen. And it'll take a creator to create sight in these eyes. He's been blind 20 years from looking at the sun, thinking he'd go to heaven if he did it. A man ignorantly done that. I said, what would you Buddha priest do? you just change his way of thinking. You'd say he's wrong. They worship their dead ancestors. Now I said, now, uh, you'd think he was, you'd say he was wrong, but what would you do? You'd change his way of thinking. Now I said, what would the Mohammedan do? Change his way of thinking. The Sikhs, Jains, and so forth, change your way of thinking. I said, we have the same thing in the United States. The Methodists all want to make all the Baptists become Methodists, and the Pentecostal wants to take all the Methodists and make them Pentecostals. It's a change of thought. But... That's not what we're talking about. Amen. We're talking about God the Creator. Amen. And I said, surely the Creator would speak. And I wouldn't have said that if that vision hadn't have been there by no means. And I said, now if the one that let him be God come give him his sight. And I said, now I challenge any priest or rajah or holy man or any of what it might be. Come give him his sight and I'll follow your philosophy. You've made a convert. That is the quietest bunch of people I ever heard. Amen. Nobody did it. I said, what are you so quiet about? I said, the reason you are is because you can't do it and neither can I. But the God of heaven who raised up his son, Jesus Christ, whose servant we are, has just showed me a vision that the man's going to receive his sight. Amen. 
I said, now, if that be not so, then you can order me out of India. But if it is so, every one of you owe your life to Jesus Christ. I would like to ask you, how many in here will give your life to Christ if this blind man receives his sight? You see your priest. Nobody comes up here. Why don't they come if they've told you the religion is so big and so great? Why don't somebody come and say something? Nobody come. I said, then you people out there, if you see this blind man standing here and up come a doctor to examine his eyes, he shook his head. He said, he's blind. And so I said, certainly he's blind. But I said, if, if God gives him his sight, how many of you will serve Jesus Christ? And just as far as I could see, uh, oceans of black hands turned to the man and said, Lord Jesus, let it be known that thou art God. The man grabbed me around the neck and there sat the mayor of Bombay sitting there, grabbed him around the neck to see as good as anybody could. What is it? It's, uh, it's actually a power. Amen. God is God. Amen. And Satan is Satan. Amen. If you don't believe in the devil... When I first got started, I, I run headlong into him every day. Don't tell me there's no devil because I know better. Amen. I have to fight with him every day. So I know there is a devil. Amen. And you must be trained when you meet him. Not trained in psychology. Not trained in education. But trained by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God's power. In His Word to make it manifest. Know your enemy. Oh, what a cruel thing He is. How I would like to stand here now and lay on to that. Go back to the Bible. And show you a man back there who come face to face with how in the contest against the enemy they fortified themselves Amen. by the Word of God. Noah! Had an experience of it. Hallelujah. And he knew that God told him it was going to rain. And the contest was on between science and the Word of God. Science says it can't happen. God said it will happen. Amen. 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 Hey, man. Amen. That same thing exists today. Amen. It will happen. Amen. It does happen. Yes. Amen. There is devils. Amen. But Amen. Jesus cast them out. Amen. And he gave his church authority to do so. Amen. Cast out devils in my Amen. name. He cast seven devils out of a pretty woman one day. Hallelujah. And he said, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks in dry places. Returning back then, bringing seven other devils with him. Yes. Now that goes to show that if the man was cleaned of devils, there was something was in him had gone out. Amen. Yes. A Amen. devil had gone out. Hallelujah. Now, when the devil moved out, that God gives God an opportunity to move in. Amen. Amen. So, and when he goes out, let the Holy Spirit come in. Don't Amen. just leave it there. If you do, just repent of your sins and go on. Yeah. Then you're going to be worse off than ever. Amen. But get Amen. that place where Satan once lived and occupied. Amen. Get it filled with the Holy yeah. Spirit of oh. God. And then you'll have the strength of God's Word in you manifested in Cast out devils. Amen. The contest is on. The evening lights are shining. God's Holy Spirit is present. Hallelujah. And now, it's just about, about three minutes until the time that the whistles are going to be blowing. And it will be midnight. And then as we leave this building to go to our different places in our homes... And to meet outside. Amen. And to meet the world. Amen. Let's not go as we have in former times. Amen. Let's go in the power of His resurrection. Amen. Let's go in the name of Jesus Christ with a banner lifted high. Amen. And with faith in His Word to handle the two-edged sword. 
with the shield and the full armor of God on to meet the enemy. Because he's getting stronger and more powerful every day. As the, as the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises up a standard against him. If we have come to the end of these things that we and the mysteries of God has been completed with us, we are looking for more strength, hey, a rapture and strength hey, to meet a very worst force that will rapture the church and take it into glory. We must have it. Let's meet 63 with the challenge. Like we are the servants of the living God. I'm like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego of old will not bow to the devils of this world and take back this thing that what we've talked about. But let's press the battle. I feel tonight as we're listening for them whistles, something like David did that dreadful hot night when he laid out there under them mulberry bushes and the enemies are routing. What an hour it must have been for David. What a time for him laying there. He didn't know how to move. He didn't know what to go by because he knew he was outnumbered. But all at once he heard the sound of a wind going through the top of the bushes. He knew God went on before him. And he went to the battle. I feel something like that tonight after last night's message. I'm laying in the darkest hour that I ever faced in my life. I feel like Isaiah at the temple after seeing those angels. I'm a man of unclean lips and dwelling among people with unclean lips. But listen, I, I'm, I've got to meet it some way. And the only thing I'm waiting to hear that rushing through the mulberry bushes to go to meet the enemy wherever it is. God help us to do it. And now, I think it's one minute until 12 o'clock and uh, 62 with all of its uh, past. Let's let it be past. Let us stand to our feet now. Each and every one of us. The context is on. Each one of you. Paul said, forgetting those things that are in the past. The, all of our mistakes of last year are pressed towards the mark of the high calling. Amen. All my mistakes that I've made in all these years, forgive me for them. God forgive me. Church forgive me. And the ministry that I, I fail with, I feel. God forgive me for it. Church forgive me my mistakes. Now press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Whatever tomorrow holds, I don't know. But I know who holds 1963. Let us raise our hands to God now. And let us pray in our own way as we make our confessions. And ask God to help us through this next coming year. Heavenly Father, as we stand here as many thoughts is dying out in our hearts. And of the mistakes of last year, and as we are approaching the death of 62 and the birth of 63, oh God, may we be one step higher up the ladder until we can see Jesus and his program. May everyone here, Lord, in prayer while the old year is dying and the new birth of the new year is coming in. May the old man seeing and unbelief die out in our hearts and the new birth come in with the 1963 like a Russian mighty wind that might fill our beings and make us new creatures in Christ. Make us fit servants. Forgive our past. Bless our future. Guide us, O Lord God, with thy mighty hand, Jehovah. Bless these ministers here. Bless all the laity, all the visitors. Be thou with us, Lord. We are your servants and we give ourselves holy to you for 1963. That the power of your spirit might have more preeminence in our life and in our being. Help us, God. Forgive us and help us, we pray. 
Raise up mighty men. Raise up mighty warriors of the faith. Open this year, Lord, that hidden man, that rock beneath the rock, that we might see the program of God. Tap off the pyramids of our life, Lord. Put the capstone Christ Jesus upon each and every one of us. May his great, magnificent, holy blessings be upon us all. May the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon us. May the power of the resurrection be manifested. God, how we thank you for you. We are yours. We give ourselves fully to you, Lord. As I go yonder not knowing where, how, or what I will do, I'm trusting you, Almighty God, that you'll guide me, your unprofitable servant, and I might be used to the honor and the glory of the Almighty. Grant it, Father. Receive our prayers. Bless our efforts. Heal the sick and the afflicted, both spiritual and physically, and make us thy servants. We are the clay. You are the potter. Mold us each one in your own way that we might fit together with Christ Jesus as a member of his body. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. And for the gospel's sake, amen and amen. She curia la siria la massaia, cura shara ma si kirie, si kirie la massaia. My people, I would say unto thee that I am the one and only God, and beside me there is none other. I am the law of creation. I am the word that became manifested unto thee. I am the word that comes before thee even this night by the power of the Holy Ghost. Did I not say that I would come in like manner? Have I not fulfilled my word, every dot and every line? O oh, my people, I say unto thee, look up, for thy redemption draweth nigh, and it is even at the gates. I say unto thee that if thou shalt continue to humble thyself and not lean unto thine own understanding, but follow me, that thou shalt truly be found in favor in my sight. I say unto thee that thou hast seen my glory before thee, and thou shalt continue to see my glory, if thou shalt remain in the truth as thou hast heard it. I say unto thee that many strange things may happen in the days to come. May thy word be established in thy hearts, may it be written in thy life, that thou shalt not turn to the right nor to the left, but keep thine eyes single unto me, for I am a jealous God, and the days are coming to an end, when all truth shall be revealed unto thee, and thou shalt stand alone, and yet thou shalt yet be together, and I say unto thee that none shall go away, none shall be left desolate, none shall be left without a guide, none shall be left without truth, none shall be left without comfort, None shall be left without their God, for I am thy God, and I am in thy midst. I see my people, I have heard their afflictions, I hear their cries unto me, and I shall deliver thee, even as I delivered my people of old out of Egypt. I shall deliver thee, even as I have come in the fullness of my presence, even as I have come in great power and in revelation. I shall be with thee. Stand fast. And move not, thus saith the Lord. Thank you, Father God. We thank you for this New Year exhortation that sends us out with the hopes and with the comfort of knowing that through the speaking of these words to these men who knew not, that the message is true and you are asking us to stand by it. We will do all that we know how, Lord, to stand by you and your word. Receive us in the name of him who taught us all that we should pray like this. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Now, those now that must go to their homes, now it's five minutes after, it's five minutes and 63. Now, may God bless you. And uh, you that want to stay for communion, you're just welcome to stay. We'd be glad to have you. It's not a closed communion. It's for every believer that's in fellowship with Christ. Uh, you're welcome to stay and take the communion with us. And the reason we do this is because this is the first thing. We're starting a journey. And Israel, before they started the journey, they killed the lamb and Amen. ate the bitter herbs and started their journey. And I thought, how appropriate this is tonight. Amen. The lamb has been killed. It's been prepared the feast. And it's midnight. That's when they eat it, Joe, at midnight. Amen. So let's, you want to stay with us and get ready for the journey to come that lays ahead. We'll be glad to have you. God bless you. And you'd have to go now. They go to your homes. God be with you till I meet you again. Amen. The rest of you may be seated. And then we'll start the communion. The sister will. <clears throat> Yeah, we meet, yeah, we meet, yeah, we meet, at Jesus' feet, yeah, we meet, we meet. Let's sing it again while we're waiting, you know, for those who are going out. Might get quiet, and then this is a very solemn thing. I'm going to read something out of the Scripture here just in a moment that's very, very, very good. And now, let's sing it again. Kill me. Let's just shake hands with somebody. If there's anything wrong in your life, that person is here. That you've wronged. Go to him now and make it up. Till we meet. Until we meet. God. Will the pianist come to the piano, please?
sunshine or shadow, He is here for you. Isn't that beautiful? Let's sing it again while they're quieting in it. He is close your eyes for you. He Heavenly Father, we are so glad that we found that true. In our darkest hours or through the sunshine, He never leaves nor forsakes. We're so happy for that, that we have our confidences built up on nothing less than Jesus' blood with righteousness. We trust, Lord, not in the fame of this world. We trust, we dare not trust the sweetest frame. But wholly lean on Jesus' name. How we thank Thee, Father. Now, we are just about to participate in one of the one of the very few natural articles that You left us. One of them was baptism. The other was communion. Next was feet washing. Oh God, we just enter in solemnly knowing that this lamb is a Passover lamb. Uh, the great wilderness journey lay just ahead of the children. The blood must first be put on the lintel of the door before the Paschal lamb could be taken. God, examine our hearts now. Is the blood there, Lord? If it's not, we pray that, that you'll apply it just now. Amen. taking away our sins and covering them, and they'll be divorced from us, Lord, the sins of this world, that we might be holy and presentable to our Father now as we come to take the, the body and the shed blood of our Lamb, God's Son, our Savior. Examine our hearts as we read, Father, and then make us thine own. For we ask it in the name of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the book of, of Corinthians, the 11th chapter, I uh, wish to read uh, a few verses. Beginning with the 23rd verse, I read this. It's Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. For I have received of the Lord... That which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had gave thanks, he brake it, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. At the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, took the cup of the... When he had supped, excuse me, let me read it over. After the same manner he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do in remembrance, as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore? Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are sick and weakly among you, many sleep. For if we should Judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for the other. If any man hungry, let him eat at home, 
that you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. As I think of this, the most solemn time, it's also written that when this communion was first given out, and um, feet washing, which we have to omit tonight, because we have no water. The waters are all cut off. And we didn't even have the restroom facilities tonight because they just had to splice it together the best they could for us to have this service tonight. But we will do as they did, said, I believe Luke stated, as they sang a hymn and went out. But do you know what this represents? Do you know at the beginning when this order was first made in Israel, down in Egypt, they were on the road to the promised land. And that's what we feel like tonight, that we're on the road to the promised land. And the journey lays ahead of us. And they had a token that when the death angel came by, that there must be blood on the door or the elder son or the elder child died in the home. The thought was, and the real uh, meaning was first to apply the blood. Did you notice how Paul placed it here? If any eat unworthily, he eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, which means the same thing that death, spiritual death, rests upon the person that would partake of the Lord's Supper unworthily. That would be out drinking and carrying on and living like the world and come to the Lord's table. We shouldn't do that. Now, let us cleanse our hearts and cleanse our hands from and our minds from evil thinking that we might come to the Lord's table reverently and holy as we know that we are connecting ourselves with our sacrifice, Christ Jesus, who is our only salvation. And now tonight, the way we do this, is one of the elders stand here, um, Brother Zabel. And I think, Brother Zabel, tonight, if you'd call from the platform first, so these people can come from the platform and form your first line here, if you will. Now, Brother Zabel will direct you in a few moments as soon as we make the blessing upon the communion. This kosher bread is made by Christians. It's unleavened bread. And if you'll notice it when you place it in your mouth, it's very rugged to be bitter. It's wrinkled and broken, mangled. That means the broken, mangled body of our Lord Jesus. Oh, when I even think of it, my heart seems to skip a beat. Hallelujah. When I think that he was mingled and bruised and Hallelujah. smitten, the innocent Son of God, do you know why he did that? Because I was guilty, and he became me a sinner, that I, by his sacrifice, might become likened unto him a Son of God. What a sacrifice! Let us bow our heads. Most holy God, thou hold in this little metal charger tonight, this bread that represents the broken, mingled, bruised, smitten body of our Lord, where that prophet cried out, He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was up on him, and with his stripes we were healed. Oh, how we remember that, Lord. <coughs> I tie myself to that sacrifice tonight, and this audience likewise, Lord, to the sacrifice. May we remember our Lord, his death and his scourging, and all that he went through for us as we take this bread into our mouths. God, we're an unworthy people. We're not fit for such a holy thing. So let thy holiness, Lord, 
Thy presence and thy blood cleanse our hearts. And as we receive it, may we purpose in our minds to constantly serve Him day and night, all the days of our life. Now sanctify this bread for its intended use. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And I hold this in my hands as 30, about 33 years of service I have served my Lord and I, I'm ashamed of myself. But I think what would I do if I had two literal drops of His blood holding in my hand tonight? What would I do with it? But you know, I've had in my hands tonight in His sight greater it's the purchase of His blood, His church. Hallelujah. So when I hold this to the juice of these grapes, I think of that. He said, I will drink the more of the fruit of the vine, till I drink it with you anew in my Father's kingdom. Then notice, the, after the war of sin is over, the first thing we do when we strike the other side is take the communion, the Lord's Supper. Let us bow our heads now while we bless this wine. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, when I think as I hold this wine here that represents the blood of Jesus, Hallelujah. how that through that flowing blood, my sins are gone. They are put in the sea of forgiveness and to be remembered no more. Hallelujah. And with this blood, a dying boy one day laid down in the hospital, and you saved me. Ah. Oh, God, how I thank thee, Lord. And then give me the charge by the Holy Spirit to lead the people to Calvary and show them the way home. Right. Thank you, Father. And now sanctify this wine for its intended use. And may every person that partakes of this sacrament tonight receive spiritual and physical strength for the journey that lays ahead. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand here and watch the families come in. That's where it'll be one of these days. Amen. <coughs> family by family, rank by rank, group by group, <coughs> one by one. When we meet him, what a time it will be when all the human life that's been upon the earth that's believed in him and trusted him will meet there that day. Won't it be wonderful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to omit the feet washing tonight because of the water. We don't have sufficient uh, facilities right now, and they will be fixed pretty soon, we trust. They're getting along good and working fast on a new tabernacle. Somehow, I think that this is very appropriate to have communion on the first of the year like this this time of day. Now, you that's from out of town, drive real careful tomorrow as you go home. May God be with you. And you hear of the homeland close. God be with you and help you. And now, the Lord willing, 
and I have to leave for this next meeting coming up in Arizona. And then, if God be willing, I'll be back with you again for the seven seals and just as I promised. I certainly desire your prayers. I need you real bad. So don't forget to pray for me. And may everything go well for you. And I certainly appreciate your attendance and how you've listened to what I have said in the gospel. I believe that we're making a change now. And I, I thank you for your kindness. Many of you driving miles and miles to come. You're a simple person like myself trying to bring the Word of God. I'm sure it was something more than it that you come to listen to besides me because I have nothing I could present. I'm uneducated, no personality, no nothing about me. Now, when I see people drive for hundreds and hundreds of miles and stand and wait and hear at 2 o'clock in the morning, it wasn't for nothing that I had. Christ. I'm so glad you love him. And I love him too. And together we love him. And because we love him, We'll never have to part. Hallelujah. We may separate for a little bit your own as time goes on, but we'll be together again. Amen. It's been my ambition is to try to lead people to that place. And now, beginning the new year, I want to say not Happy New Year to you. I want to say this to you. God bless you. And if he does that, that's all you'll have need of for the coming year. And I trust that he will. And I'm, by his grace, we'll try this next year. He shall spare me, spare you. Uh, by his grace, I hope I'm a better pastor next year than I have been this year. hope I'll be a better servant to Christ. I'll try hard to try to live closer, more truer. To bring the message just as he gives me, I shall bring it to you best that I can withhold nothing that he would want me to give you. I'll do all that I know how. And I know you feel the same way. You, you feel like it, we all want to work together now, or the evening lights are certainly getting dim, and the sun's far setting, the earth's cooling off. We know that. Spiritually speaking, the church is cooling off, and the revival is over. We don't know what comes next, but we will trust God for that, whatever it is. Now, as we sometimes, I want you to remember that the tabernacle here has one of the grandest pastors there is in the world, Brother Armin Neville, a godly man, a good man. And when, in my absence, Brother Neville's in full charge, just as like I would be here. Trustees, deacons, and so forth remain in their offices, just as they do. And this is our headquarters. This is where we are... We're we're stationed right here. Billy Paul will not be with me out there, only just for the meeting. You'll be coming back here. The business and all is operated right on here just the same. Just going out there, that doesn't mean that I'm leaving you. I'm just going, you understand. It's just a vision. I don't know what it means. I trust and do believe that it'll be for the betterment of the whole church. Now, I know it will be better for all of us if we follow the leadings of the Lord. That's all we know how to do. It's not easy for me. I remember once before I had to walk away from the church here. Some of the old timers remember that. How I just couldn't do it. I love people. When I was a little boy, I wasn't loved. Nobody cared for me when I was a kid. And I, when I found out somebody loved me, I, I don't want to die for them. And I, because somebody loves you. Somebody cares. I was climbing one time on a post, and my hook slipped out on an old cedar post, and the knot was up high, and I hit it with my spur and turned around, fell about 15 feet and caught on my arm. The lady screamed, and she kind of patted herself like that. I always liked that lady. She cared. She's somebody who cared. And I always thought anybody who cared for me, I loved them. And... <coughs> Here some time ago, I was downtown, and I was thinking of days that used to be. 
and what God has done for me, and I certainly appreciate it. I thank you for your love and fellowship. I would never try to lead you wrong. It will always be the right way, the best of my knowledge. You take me record. I have never said anything about myself. It's always been Jesus Christ. And, Amen. And try to stay just close to his word as I know how to stay, to lead you and guide you to this place. I commit you now in the hands of Brother Neville, first in the hands of God, and then in the hand care of Brother Neville, to pastor the church and to watch over the heritage until I can have this meeting and get back to you again. Trusting by that time I can bring you a great revelation from God that will thrill of our heart and Amen. glorify the church of God. We usually take communion. I don't want to say no more. You know how I feel. And I think the song that we should sing right now, My faith looks up to thee. Thou Lamb of Calvary. While we stand singing, let's shake hands with each other and say, God bless you. My faith looks up to thee. your hands to him. My faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Till we meet again, everybody now. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet. Thank you.